Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome as we gather together to worship. Thank you for being part of our church family in this way, even though the times and the circumstances around us are difficult. We really appreciate you joining with us as we worship together. And uh, thank you for joining those of you, many of you, our Bible study online, the, the, the U version Bible studies that we've been doing. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to share around God's Word, not just on Sunday, but as our church community together. Today I'm starting a new series from Philippians and, and for the next few weeks you can join us in a Bible study through the week about that too. So there will be information soon about a U version Bible study that, that we can be sharing in together over the next few weeks and the next few Sundays as we share together from the book of Philippians. The other thing that I mentioned in our Facebook uh, last a moment or two ago is that that if you want to send us a prayer or a story about how God has been nurturing you and using your faith and actions in this time, then we'd love to share that as part of our worship together um, in future Sundays. So as we prepare to worship God this Sunday, will you join me as we pray? Lord, thank you that we are your church, even if we don't gather together here in this building. So we want to say thank you for one another. Thank you that, that we are the community of church in the marketplace and, and we are people who are perhaps visiting with us today. Lord, we want to give ourselves to you and pray that you would bless us as we worship you together. Lord, we thank you for uh, Paul starting a church in a place called Philippi and we thank you for this letter that he writes to them. Thank you that it is full of hope and joy and happiness. And we pray over the weeks to come as we study it together that, that you will help us to radiate some of that happiness and joy and peace into the world around us and into the circumstances around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Welcome to Church in the Marketplace online. It's so great to be with you this morning. As always, let's just take a moment and greet each other in the chat. Welcome back. It's so good to be with you this morning. We just have a few announcements. Uh, so we just want to continue to encourage you in your giving. I mean, it is wild times that we live in, but I just encourage you to just keep on being generous and just keep on sowing in to the house of God and actually just find people to be generous with. If you've got resources, just bless someone. So I just encourage you uh, to continue being generous in, in your giving. Now the other thing is that we, we still have our groups going. Now there's going to be some information that will be kind of put out via email that will give you better instructions on how to sign up for those groups. So there's different groups running. I know uh, Louise has her Bible group going on a Thursday evening. I've got one that happens on a Wednesday night. So just stay posted for that because that information is coming. So some other exciting news is, well, a lot of you know that we've been we've started a Minecraft server. So I've made a little video, and that's just going to spin now. Hello and welcome. I just thought it would be a good idea to show you around church in the Minecraft, let you know what we've been up to. So that's that's our main base. Over here we have. KFC self-serve chicken. Big shout out to Wei. He was the one who made this. Uh, it's very cool. And here it is. Church of the Minecraft. What a beautiful day. Big shout out to Eric because he is the master architect who's been building this amazing structure. But yeah, there you have it. There's the progress of church to the minecraft so if you would like to join you can click the link in the description and it will take you to the discord now we are playing the windows 10 bedrock version and i'm pretty certain you can download it and play on ipad or tablet on your phone uh i think you can play it on switch definitely play it on xbox so you will have to add me on your xbox live account so my gamer name is Gary the Cool, spelled G-A-R-R-I the Cool. So you'd have to add me as a friend on Xbox Social. But just jump on the Discord and um, I will help you get it set up if you are interested in joining Church in the Minecraft. All right, peace out. Now the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to just take a moment um, right now and I actually want to pray. So... Let's just do that. Let's just close our eyes and let's, let's pray. Father God, we just come before you right now, Lord, and we, we, just, we just cry out and we pray for our health professionals, 
Lord, all the nurses and all the doctors and all those working in the hospital, Lord, we just pray that you would just be with them at this time. Lord, I just pray that your peace would fill their hearts. Lord, you would gu um, guide their hands as, as they do the work of, of the doctors and all that stuff that, that they're doing. Lord, I just thank you that you would bless them. Lord, we also just pray for all the workers, the, uh, the farmers, those who are involved in the groceries and all of that stuff. Lord, we just pray that you would bless them too and that you would be with them. Lord, we, just, we also lift up people who are feeling lonely, who are feeling this sense of isolation. Lord, I just pray that you would just fill their hearts with peace right now wherever they are. I pray that peace would just enter their hearts and their minds. And Lord, we also just want to lift up our leaders. Lord, we want to lift up our Prime Minister. We also want to lift up all of the politicians, all of Parliament. Lord, we just pray that you would give them wisdom in how to lead our country. We just lift these things up to you and we trust you with them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Today's reading is from Philippians 1. I'm going to, we're going to be reading from verses 1 to 11. And I'm reading from the NLT translation. This letter is from Paul and Timothy, slaves of Christ Jesus. I'm writing to all of God's holy people in Philippi who belong to Christ Jesus, including the elders and deacons. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So it is right that I should feel as I do about all of you, for you have a special place in my heart. You share with me the special favor of God, both in my imprisonment and in defending and confirming the truth of the good news. God knows how much I love you and long for you with the tender compassion of Christ Jesus. I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you also be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God. Well, morning everyone. It's good to be with you here at Church in the Marketplace if you're a regular of our community and if you've joined us today online then we just want to say hi and we're glad we're delighted that you've joined us and we hold you and your circumstances in our prayers today as Brody said a moment ago if we can pray something particular for you if we can help in some way then please be in touch with us well Easter is now behind us over the past weeks, we've thought about the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. We've thought about how they create for us and continue to secure for us a renewed relationship with God, a redeemed relationship, a relationship that opens a place for us in God's eternal purposes. We call it heaven. So now I've been thinking about our focus over the coming weeks. How can I be encouraging for us as we live out our circumstances and find a place in our lives and our families and our church and our community as the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic unfold for us. I've decided to encourage us, despite our circumstances, to choose happiness. You see, we can walk down many roads searching for happiness and find nothing is ever good as it promises to be. We want to be happy, but sometimes happiness seems to be elusive, just seems out of our grasp somehow. And in times like the ones we're in now, 
we could use a full measure of happiness so that we can be the people that we want to be and the people that God purposes for us to be. So how can we put some happiness into practice even while we're restricted to our homes and limited in our contacts? We're going to use Paul's letter to the Philippian church as our base in God's word partly because it's one of the most joyful parts of scripture. So as we prepare to explore happiness, let's pray. Our Lord God, we thank you that you want our lives to experience joy and our lives to experience happiness. And so thank you for this letter of Paul to the Philippian church where he speaks a lot about how we might have that sense of joy and peace and happiness. So we pray that as we explore it together, you would help us to understand it and you would help us to find ways to put into practice what it teaches in our day-by-day -day lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we get too far into what Scripture has to say, I want to give us a couple of happiness principles. We can work on these at any time. We can find these principles pretty much anywhere. They're used by doctors and psychologists and ministers and counsellors as tools of their trade. Here they are, five principles of happiness. The first one is don't look for happiness, create it. Ha happiness isn't something that we look for. Happiness is something we create. It's our choice. We're as happy as we choose to be. Second principle is happiness isn't a goal. It's more the result of how we think and live and act. It's a byproduct. If we make happiness the goal of our lives, we're going to live a very self-centered life. And that's going to end up making us miserable. Three, our, ha our habits create our happiness. Happiness is a choice. We, we shape our habits and then they shape us. We can create habits of happiness in our lives. The fourth one, happiness based on happenings is temporary. But happiness built on habits is long lasting. I, I can go to Disneyland and be happy. And then I can come out and realize how much money I've spent and not be happy. Anything where we base our, happen, our happiness on happenings or circumstances on an occasion, as soon as the occasion is over, we can lose our happiness. And fifthly, habits are as addicting, happy habits are as addicting as bad habits, but they're a whole lot more rewarding. Bad habits take some time to develop. We, we don't develop them overnight. And the same thing with good habits. We don't develop them overnight either. But habits of happiness can be developed so that they become habits in our lives. So Philippians is a great book. It's the happiest book in the Bible, I think. The word joy, the word glad, the word enjoy, the word rejoice, the word happy and happiness. These words are used in various forms 17 times in a very short book. Philippians was written by Paul. And what's amazing is the happiest book in the Bible was written by Paul while he was a prisoner in Rome. This book is kind of like a thank you note. Philippi was a city in Greece where Paul started a church. He's now in a prison in Rome and he's writing to thank them. He's thanking them for financial gifts that they've given him. He's thanking them for their prayers. He's thanking them for their support and for their love. All these things. So if we want to be happy where do we start? What would you start with? With money, with sex, with time? Paul starts with relationships. It's impossible to be happy, he says, while our relationships are unhappy. We can meet all kinds of people. They've got all kinds of money, all kinds of fame, every kind of pleasure that you can imagine. But if they're in the middle of a relationship struggle, if they're in the middle of a divorce, they're not happy. If they're in the middle of some sort of relationship drama, they're not happy. If our relationships are unhappy, our lives are going to be unhappy. So Paul, when he starts talking about modeling the habits of happiness, he begins right off the bat that the first 11 verses of Philippians talking about how to have healthy relationships. Brody read it for us. In the first 11 verses, Paul describes his relationship to the people of Philippi and he gives us four statements. Here they are. 
The first thing that Paul says is this, be grateful for the people in our lives. Study after study links gratitude to happiness. It's been proven over and over by psychologists and sociologists that the more grateful we are, the happier we are. The more ungrateful we are, the unhappier we are. If we want to have good relationships, we start with an attitude of gratitude. Philippians 1.3 says, Every time I think of you, remember Paul's in Rome, this church is in Philippi, he says, I give thanks to my God. Paul says, I remember the good things about you and I focus on the good times that we've had. Folks, that simple truth is a source of good relationships. Let me ask you, when you think about the people in your life, is your first thought gratitude? It's not. Maybe it's what do they need to do for me? Or are they late? Or are they in a hurry? Or what's not right? What do we have a problem with? What do we have to get done? Often our first thought isn't gratitude. Paul says, when I think of you, the first thing I do is I'm grateful for who you are and I am grateful for what you've done. Now, here's a problem, I think. The longer that we know someone, the more we can take them for granted. Isn't that true? The longer we know someone, the more we take them for granted. The, the more we focus on their faults, the easier it is to remember the bad times. I don't know why it is, but Often it's easier to remember bad times than it is the happy times. Paul says, every time I think of you, I give thanks. If we just develop that habit, that whenever we think of people in our lives, our friends, our neighbours, our husband, our wife, our kids, our relatives, that our first thought is gratitude. And friends, it's a habit that we need to develop. It, it doesn't come naturally. We're not by nature grateful people. We're by nature discontented people. We're by nature always wanting more, wanting things to be different. In Philippians 1 verse 5, Paul says, I thank God for the help that you gave me. If you know the story of the church that Paul started there in Philippi, there was a woman named Lydia, a businesswoman who opened up a home. He says, from the very first day, you welcomed us and you helped us. And several times in Paul's travels that the Philippian church was funding his missionary journeys. In this particular incident, they'd sent a man named Epaphrodites all the way to Rome to bring Paul a financial gift because he was in Rome and in prison. Now Paul is sending Epaphrodites back with this thank you note to the people in Philippi. He says, I thank God for the help you gave me. I wonder what it is that other people have done for you and for me. Again, the longer we know someone, the more we can take them for granted, the more we look for their faults and the easier it is to remember the bad things rather than the good things. The truth about Paul in Philippi is he didn't have a good time there. In fact, it was one of his roughest churches getting started. But you don't get any of that in this letter. The fact is when Paul went to this city to start a church he was beaten, he was whipped, he was humiliated, he was falsely arrested, he was thrown in prison, he went through an earthquake and then he was politely asked by the church leaders to leave the city. And he says, when I think of you, I thank God for you. It's like he's choosing selective memory. This wasn't a happy place all the time. It wasn't all sunshine and roses. There was a lot of bad stuff that happened. But Paul chose not to dwell on painful memories. Memories are a choice. If we want to hold on to our painful memories, we can. But we're not going to be happy. Paul had a lot of reasons to have painful memories in Philippi. But he says, every time I think of you, I thank God for you. He's choosing to be grateful for the people in his life. So here's a happiness hint, something you might put into practice in the coming week. Here it is. Remember the best and forget the rest. If we want to be happy, remember the best and forget the rest. Develop a selective memory. 
the attitude of gratitude will change our relationships. The second habit of relationship happiness is this. We pray with joy for the people in our lives. Paul is praying, as we just heard in this passage. Doesn't it encourage us to know when somebody's praying for us? Of course it does. The fact, one of the things that sometimes keeps me going is your prayers. When people say, I'm praying for you, Peter. I take that seriously. Paul says in verse 4, I always pray for you. That's part of it. But notice the rest of the verse, and I make my requests with a heart full of joy. I want you to think for a minute of somebody who irritates you. If they're nearby, just think about them. Don't look at them. <laughs> Maybe somebody you've got a strained relationship with or they just rub you the wrong way. So here's two questions for us. One is, do we pray for them? Or do we just complain and grumble and nag and nitpick? I suspect that if we'd pray more, we'd have a lot less to grumble and complain and nag about. So we can decide. Does nagging work? No. Does prayer work? Yes. So, so why do we do more of the thing that doesn't work than does? Paul says, I pray for you. And we need to pray for the people in our lives. But then he says, I pray for you, making requests with a heart full of joy. When we do pray, do we pray with joy? Let me, let me give you a little secret here. There are things in people's lives around us we would like to change. We don't want to change ourselves, perhaps. We want to change them. If she'd just do this, if he'd just do that, we always want to change other people and we can't. The only, they can only change themselves and, and we can only change ourselves. But we can pray and God can change people. Positive thinking isn't enough. Positive thinking might help change me, but it can't change somebody else. But positive prayer can. So positive prayer is more positive and more powerful than just positive thinking. So here's another happiness hint. The quickest way to change a bad relationship to a good one is to start praying for them. It'll change you and it can change them. Start praying for them. You say, what do I pray? Well, I'd encourage you to pray what Paul prayed in verses 9 to 11. Here's what he says. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and that you may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ and you may be filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So here's four things that we can pray. We can pray these for our kids. We can pay, pray them for our friends, our boyfriend, our girlfriend. Pray these for our boss. Pray these for me. Anybody you care about, pray with joy for the people in our lives. First, Paul says, pray they will grow in love. Paul says that your love will grow more and more. Two, he says, pray that they will make wise choices. Pray that the people in our lives, in, in our family, our friends, our neighbours, pray that they will make wise choices. Verses 9 and 10 say that you will fully know and understand how to make right choices. Third, pray that they live with integrity. Paul says, I pray that you may live pure and blameless lives until Christ returns. And fourth, pray that they will become like Jesus. Parents, there's your prayer agenda right there. Husbands, wives, friends, there's your prayer agenda right there. Pray that they may become like Christ. Verse 11 says that you will be filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. What fruit is he talking about? We call it the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is the character of Jesus. Galatians 5, and 23 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, 
The fruit of the Spirit is goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. So these four things, you can pray them for me any day of the week. Pray that I will grow in love. Pray that I will make wise choices. Pray that I will live with integrity. Pray that I will become more and more like Jesus. You can pray them for yourself. You can pray them for your spouse. So the first thing we do, we be grateful for the people in our lives. And secondly, we pray joyfully. And here's what we pray. We expect the best from the people in our lives. We don't normally expect the best from people around us, and we often expect the worst. We expect them to let us down because they have a track record. Paul's saying we want to make a habit of believing in people rather than criticizing them. Expect the best. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, I'm confident of this that God who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ. You see that word confident? I am confident of this, that God who began the good work in you will carry it on to completion. I'm expecting the best from the people in my life. Paul, Paul is a pro at bringing out the best in people. Here's a couple of things that we do to bring out the best in people and and Paul does all three of them in this passage. He believed in people. He says, I am confident. And he gave them confidence. Paul says, I believe in people. I give them confidence. I help them grow. I'm confident that what God has started in your life, he's going to continue to do. We all need people to believe in us. Because that's how we change. We can't change unless somebody believes in us and we believe in ourselves. Acceptance always precedes transformation. That's why we shouldn't tell it like it is, but tell it like it could be. We draw a picture. This is what you could become. This is who you could be with God's power in your life. And then they get excited. Paul says, I'm confident. I believe in you. The second thing he did was he gave people vision. The vision was you're going to keep growing. What God starts, he finishes. He's not going to leave you halfway out there. He gave people vision. He painted a picture of the future. Why is that important? Because study after study shows that we tend to live up to the expectations of other people. When people expect the best of us, we tend to do better. We tend to become what we believe, the, the, what we believe the most important people in our lives think about us. So Paul says, I expect the best from people. I believe in people. I give people vision. He was patient with people's progress. I am confident that what God began in you, he's going to keep on and he's going to carry to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. He was patient with people's progress. Why is that important to our happiness? Because if we insist on perfection in people, we're going to be miserable the rest of our lives. There's nobody who's perfect. And if we're always expecting perfection in people before we can enjoy them, then we're never going to be happy because nobody's perfect. Paul says, I'm patient with people's progress. So the happiness hint to practice is this. Celebrate how far people have come rather than judging them for how much they still have to go. We've got to be patient with people's progress. God doesn't wait until we're mature for him to start loving us, so we shouldn't do that to others either. We've got to love them, warts and all. We've got to be patient with their progress. And the key to patience is love. Paul says in verse 7, It is right for me to feel this way about you since I have you in my heart. This is the real key to happiness and it's the real key to healthy relationships. We've got to have people in our heart. I reckon that if people are on my heart, they're less likely to be on my nerves. And if I want to get people off my nerves, I've got to get them on my heart. Many of our relationship problems come because we tend to react with our head and not with our heart. And that's the wrong place to go in relationships. 
when somebody says you just don't understand, they're not usually talking about understanding. What they're really saying is you don't feel my pain and you don't feel what I'm feeling. It has nothing to do with understanding. It has everything to do with empathy. We're not being sympathetic. We're not empathetic. We don't care. We're not feeling their feelings. When they say you don't understand, we often try to logic it out. But it's not logic. It's feelings. And feelings are just feelings. They're not right or wrong. They're just feelings. Paul says that there's a fourth secret. We must love people in our lives like Jesus does. We're grateful for the people in our lives. We pray for the people in our lives with joy. We expect the best from the people in our lives. And we love the people in our lives like Jesus does. Of course, we're not Jesus. We tend to be self-centered. We tend to look at our own needs and all the things that have happened in our own lives. But still, we have to love people like Jesus does. In verse 8, Paul says, God is my witness that I tell the truth when I say that my deep love for you, my deep love for you all, comes from the heart of Christ himself. 1 John 3.16 says, This is how we know what real love is. Christ gave his life for us. So then we ought to give our lives for others. 1 John 3.16, does that remind you of John 3.16? The same guy wrote both. You know, we can know John 3.16 and ignore 1 John 3.16. We all know John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him might not perish but have everlasting life. That's the way to salvation. It's the way to have our past forgiven and have a purpose for living and have a home in heaven. God says, I sent my son. That, that's how much I love you. We're all grateful for God's love for us, John 3.16. But the key to healthy relationships, that's 1 John 3.16. This is how we know what real love is. Christ gave his life for us. So then we ought to give our lives for others. That's my prayer for us today. My prayer for our relationships that we wouldn't be thinking just about ourselves, but living our lives for other people. So as we think about that in the week to come, will you join me as we pray? And as we do that, would you like to think about which of these four habits today you will commit to work on this week? Who, who do we need this week to be more grateful for? Or perhaps are we praying for the people in our lives and are we praying with joy or are we praying with complaining? So let me encourage us to pray for someone, the four things that Paul prayed, that people will grow in love, that they will make wise choices, that way they will live with integrity, that they will become like Jesus. Or perhaps you'd like to work on being patient with the progress of someone in your life or perhaps there's someone you could start loving from the heart rather than from your head so as you think about those things will you join me as we pray let's pray oh lord god i ask you to give me the power to be grateful for the people in my life help me to remember the best and forget the rest. Help me to start praying for them and to pray with joy, to pray that they grow in love and that they live with integrity to become like Jesus. Lord, I want you to help me develop the habit of expecting the best of the people in my life rather than criticizing the worst. Help me to believe in people. Help me to be confident and build confidence Help me to be patient with people's progress. Help me to recognize how far people have come, not how far they still have to go. And Lord, help me to have love in my heart and not to love people just from my head. And please help me to love people in my life like Jesus does. Help me to be willing to sacrifice 
and to serve. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Though I may wonder, I still will follow. Though I may wonder, I still will follow. Though I may. Thanks so much for tuning in this week and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and also don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next week, church. God bless.